can't turn your phone while I'm recording. Since when? Hello, everybody. Welcome to another homegrown Facebook Live class. Tonight, we are going to do a slow flow for 60 minutes, and we're going to try to focus on some heart opening and just broadening the chest and dropping the shoulders back and down. I know a lot of us are working at home or just managing things at home and might not have the best posture lately. So we're going to start um, in hero's pose. And if you have a block, blanket, book, any kind of prop or anything that you would like, you're welcome to add it behind you, either between your feet or if it's a blanket, maybe just across the ankles. And you can kind of use that as a little bit of a prop. In hero's pose, you typically want to kind of let your seat settle in between your feet so that your heels are on the outside edges. So you can sit up nice and tall. And if you don't need the prop underneath you, you're welcome to just sit back as you are to so see what's comfortable for you. So take a minute to kind of get settled. Let the knees track forward, so avoiding kind of letting them start to walk open. So keeping everything uh, in hips distance alignment. So sitting up nice and tall, just start to close down the eyes. You can let the hands rest up, uh, open or you can leave them down if you're looking to kind of quiet and ground down into your practice, just quieting from the day and settling in. Let the eyes softly close, let the face start to relax. Just start to come into your, into your body and into your breath. Starting your deep inhales and exhales. Just starting to soften the face, the jaw, the brow center. Maybe the legs are a little bit tight, maybe the shoulders are a little bit tight. So just go easy at first. These are stressful times, and kind of a little crazy schedules. And as I mentioned, I know posture and doing things at home is probably not what you're maybe normally doing. So take a moment here to check in with the body, see how things are feeling, see where you need to relax or release any tension or tightness. And also to draw in from the center of the body. So support yourself from your abdominals, drawing the navel center back into the spine. So sitting up a little taller, supporting yourself from the center. And there's a tiny little um, tail tucking action there, but nothing overly intense. Just sitting up nice and tall. So just sitting up, up through the crown of the head as you inhale and exhale, starting to come into your practice, clearing your mind from any busyness or any mind chatter that might exist for you. Letting all of that settle. Inhaling and exhaling. As I always say, please move through your practice as you need to. Listen to your body before listening to me. Inhaling and exhaling at your own pace. Maybe it's to a five count breath, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, depending upon how comfortable you are. There are always options and modifications along the way through the practice. So do what works for you. If you know how to challenge yourself safely and you'd like to, feel free. If you need to ease up, that's always an option as well. So we'll just do a little seated meditation, just quieting ourselves and preparing for our practice. Our focus tonight will be gratitude. At this time where everything is a little bit upside down and hard to manage, it is helpful for us to rem remind ourselves of being grateful for the things that are steady and present and safe and healthy at this time. Presence brings awareness, which enables us to see things clearly and to connect more deeply to our body and breath. It helps us feel the inhale, the prana, the life energy that comes with acknowledgement. That fullness consequently brings an exhale, a need to empty out, and subsequently give back and share that great sense of peace. So thinking of this quality as we move through our practice, this readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness and just notice what you're grateful for. So as I mentioned, we we'll are working through lots of heart opening, relaxing the shoulders down, opening up the chest, lots of natural back bending type of movements, awakening the front body and engaging the back body. 
Remembering there's no sense of competition, no judgments, no expectations in your practice. Do what works for you. Just take another few moments here, inhaling and exhaling. Deep diaphragmatic breath, rising and falling. Maybe it becomes more of that deep ujjayi breath. We practice in yoga, a bit of a hum at the back of the throat. All the air moving in and out through, out through your nose while keeping the mouth closed softly, building heat naturally in the body. Letting the arms just rest comfortably wherever suits you, any mudra or hand position you'd like. Notice any areas of the body if you're feeling tense or tight and try to send some extra exhaling breath there. Inhaling and exhaling the tops of the feet. Feeling a little funny. Say maybe you just don't normally sit in this position. It's very natural to feel a little strange there, and that's okay. We won't be here very long. Just a few more rounds of breath. Take the hands to Anjali Mudra or prayer in front of the chest. Maybe bow the head for a moment. Again, welcome to call to mind any intention or dedication you'd like to have for your practice. Maybe just calling to mind that idea of gratitude, being grateful for what is constant, what we can be present with. Inhaling and exhaling. When you're ready to start to float, float the eyes open, feel free to do so. And then take another very big inhale and just reach the arms up overhead. Maybe start to take the gaze up if you like clasping the hands and turning the palms up to the sky as you start to open up. Maybe tip back just a little bit, but we're not leaning. Still staying nice and strong through your center. Inhaling and exhaling. And when you're ready, just release the arms behind you to clasp at the small back of the sacrum. Draw the hands together, draw your knuckles down towards the mat, and maybe start to take the head up if that's comfortable. Again, always be mindful of where the neck needs to be. Inhaling and exhaling. If it is doable for you, maybe start to take a lion's breath. Exhaling out of the mouth. Stick the tongue out. Release the face and the jaw. Maybe relax. Open through the front of the throat. Inhaling and exhaling. Slowly start to take your gaze back up to center. And then if you are ready, just start to hip hinge forward. And you can keep the gaze lifted so no need to drop the head. Just take the upper body over the legs, gazing down, keeping the hands at your sacrum so we're not letting the shoulders float up. Inhaling and exhaling. And then when you're ready, lift the gaze first, let the chest rise, start to lift open. And then release the hands and just take them back overhead. Take the hands to either elbow and then start to open the chest. Again, maybe a little bit of a tip backwards. Nothing too much on the lower spine, so always being mindful of our low backs. Inhaling and exhaling as you start to just open up a little bit further. And then slowly release the arms coming down and then making your way up onto the knees. Move slowly. Feel free to move out uh, any prop out of your way, blanket or block, whatever you might have added. And just come forward, maybe roll out the ankles, move the toes slowly, and then set the tops of the feet down onto the mat and come up onto the knees. Again, you're always welcome to add any padding or anything you would like underneath the knees if you have a blanket or anything at home. We won't be here too long, um, but just standing up onto the knees so your hips are over your knees. When you're ready, start to take the hands behind you. You can take the hands to the low back or right below the low back rather, draw the elbows towards one another, or you can make fists right at the sacrum. Inhaling and exhaling. When you're ready, start to lift up. So just a modified stress on our camel pose. So just a gentle tip back as you open up, maybe start to take the gaze up. Hips stay over your knees. And if it's more uh, balanced and you want to keep the toes turned under, you're welcome to. Inhaling and exhaling. Again, gaze wherever is comfortable for the neck. If that means staying forward, feel free. Inhaling and exhaling. 
And then slowly, when you're ready, you just come down into a little child's pose, almost like a rabbit pose, taking the crown of the head towards the back. Inhaling and exhaling. We're just going to do that two more times. So when you're ready, start to walk your way back up to the knees. Again, hand place them wherever you choose, either fist at the sacrum or maybe take the palms to the sacrum as you rise up. Just a gentle camel pose. Inhaling and lifting and opening, lengthening up as much as you can before exhaling and opening up, drawing the elbows towards one another, opening up through the chest. Again, knees can go up a little bit if that's comfortable. Inhaling and exhaling, and then slowly coming down into your child's pose once more. Again, you can take the forehead to the mat or maybe more towards that rabbit pose as you come onto the crown. Inhaling and exhaling, we're going to just come into that once more. So when you're ready, make your way back up onto the knees. And again, find that little baby camel pose. So hands behind the sacrum. Start to lift and lengthen as much as you can before you start to open. Again, going only as far as the low back allows. So most of our heart opening back bending should be coming more from the upper part of your spine, not the lower back. Inhaling and exhaling. And then slowly releasing as you're ready, just coming back down into that little uh, little um, child's pose. It can be more towards a rabbit as well if that's comfortable for the head and the neck. Inhaling and exhaling, releasing here, counterposing from our back bend. And then when you're ready, start to just walk yourself up, leaving your right knee down to the mat. Extend your left leg out to the side and we're going to just take a brief gate pose. When you're ready, take an inhale and float the arms up overhead, and then exhale and bow towards the left leg as you lift and come up and over, to side bending over, reaching through the right side body. Inhaling and exhaling. And then slowly just come on up gently. Let the right hand come down to the mat, and this time moving into this modified side plank and start to spin the heart center up and open as much as you can. So instead of reaching the top arm maybe alongside the ear where we might normally try to turn open a little bit further. So sometimes just these little tweaks in our poses can have a different effect. Inhaling and exhaling when you're ready, slowly come on up and we'll just start to come into the center. Let the left knee come down, just coming back. Take a moment to extend your right leg and we'll take that same thing on the other side. When you're ready, Start to inhale and rise, and then as you're ready to exhale, right arm coming down, left arm up and over into your gate pose. Lengthen through the left side body, and keep spinning the heart center up to the sky, gazing up, inhaling and exhaling. And then when you're ready, start to float up through center, let the left hand come down, right leg lifts, and the right arm floats up as well into that modified side of plank. And again, just start to spin the heart center up a little bit further open. So rather than keeping maybe that right arm alongside the ear, which we might normally do that variation of the spin a little bit further up and open. One more round of breath. Your breath is fluid throughout your practice. Even if we're holding postures, your breath is what carries you. Inhaling and exhaling, slowly come on up, back through center. Pause, let the right knee come down. And then slowly just come long ways on your mat if you're not already there. And come onto all fours. So take a minute to shift and adjust whatever you need. Start to move into a few hat and cows. Just taking your time to drop the head or try in the back for your cat pose. And then inhale, melt the heart center, let the tail come up, your gaze up, or maybe just close the eyes. So just a few rounds here at your own pace. Inhaling and exhaling, taking your time. Let your breath be audible as you exhale, press all the air out, arch nice and high in the back, maybe even pausing in that arch to turn a little bit more towards the right shoulder or the left. Inhaling and exhaling. And when you're ready, just start to find your way back to all fours. Take any gentle movements that you need. Remember, hands are nice and active. Soft elbows. And then when you're ready, float the right arm up 
and inhale to reach a little longer. And then as you exhale, thread the needle, right arm underneath the left, coming down onto the right shoulder. That left hand can walk out a little further if that helps to revolve a little bit more as you twist. Inhale and exhale, maybe twist a little further. You can use the support of your left hand. Inhaling, exhaling, slowly walk the left hand closer to you if you've taken it out and then rise on up. Exhale, one more time, right arm underneath the left. Maybe you can go a little further this time than you did before, so take your time. Inhale, exhale, maybe roll a little bit further and do it onto the back of the head, onto that right shoulder. When you're ready to come out, left hand maybe walks back in as you reach up with the right arm. Exhale, right hand down. Again, shift, adjust any movement there that you need. Same thing on the other side. Left arm rises, reach long. And then as you exhale, thread the needle, left arm underneath the right. One side might be a lot different than the other. So feel free to take any little minor adjustments that you need. Press into the right hand as you roll into this twist. Stretching through the upper back and the shoulder. One more round of breath in. One more round of breath out. When you're ready, slowly start to float that left arm back up. And then when you're ready, exhale. Last time on the side, left arm comes underneath the right. Maybe walk the right hand out a little bit further. Maybe tensing the fingers, spinning into that twist a little bit further. Soft belly, exhale, inhale. And slowly walk the hands, right, right hand back in as you reach the left arm back up. And gently come down. This time take the knees wide, big toes to touch all the way back into your extended child's pose. Let the chest would come down onto the mat. Feel free to take time to roll out your ankles or your hands and wrists and your ankles, if, if, so whenever you need to. You can move the toes, the little subtle movements that you need. Inhaling and exhaling. And when you're ready, slowly make our way up into our first downward facing dog. The knees narrow, the toes turn, and you're pressing up and back into that big upside down V-shaped feet are about hip distance. Feel free to walk in place. Rise on the toes, maybe bending one knee and then the other. So any little initial movement there that you would like to take, feel free. And the first downward facing dog might feel a little bit tight, so take your time. Try to put a little bit more weight into the lower body coming out of your wrists. Big inhale, big exhale. Maybe rising on the toes, sending your seat a little bit higher. And big bend in your right knee, sink your left heel. If you want, you can lift that right foot off the mat, maybe tuck it behind the left calf or left ankle. If that doesn't feel balanced, feel free to leave the right foot down. I'm just putting a little bit more intensity through the stretch on the left leg. Inhaling and exhaling. When you're ready to set the right foot down, go ahead and do so. Feel free to walk in place. And then rise high on your toes. And then other side, right heel sinks, left knee bends. And again, you can leave the left foot down onto the mat. Or if you want to take the left foot up behind the calf or the ankle, pressing a little bit more weight into the right side, feel free. Drawing the belly in and up, so still using your core strength to support you. Nice and strong. Inhaling and exhaling. When you're ready to set your left foot down, if you've lifted it, go ahead and do so. And then when you're ready, just rise on your toes and bend the knees and walk your way to the top of the mat. Let your feet come about hip distance. Let your arms hang, knees are soft, upper body. Just fully heavy over the lower body. Hands can come to either elbow if you wish also. So taking your time here, maybe moving the head, yes, no. Letting the body just fold in half. 
Really root down through the whole foot. Let your toes be light. Inhaling and exhaling. When you're ready, slowly release the arms. Soft bend in your knees as you start to lift the gaze. And root down to rise tall, reaching up. Inhaling and coming up and all the way back. And here, just a tiny little back bend. And then exhale the arms out to your Tadasana, your mountain pose. So take a few breaths in your mountain just to get yourself steady and grounded. Maybe close the eyes, rocking a little forward or back to find the four corners of your feet. Let your kneecaps lift. Let your thighs engage. Relax the shoulders down. The heart center opens. Arms are at your side but active. And keeping all of these elements of your mountain pose with you as you move into standing postures. As you're ready, flutter the eyes open if you close them. And then just take the arms behind you. So same as we did the front of our knees. Draw the arms behind you. Open up the chest. Maybe start to tip back a little bit as you gaze up. And then exhale and hip pinch forward over the legs. Keep the arms behind you. So hands are going to stay at your sacrum and fold forward. Inhaling and exhaling. And then when you're ready, soft bend in the knees, start to lift the gaze, press into the ground to rise all the way up, inhaling, and then exhale, hands through heart center all the way down. So three little half salutes just to start to get our breath and movement linked. Inhale, rise halfway, fingertips touch, our hands to shins, exhale to fold, and then press down and rise tall. So just the top part of our salutation. Exhale, the hands through center. Pause, inhale, reaching up, out to the sides. This time, exhale, swan dive, forward fold, halfway on your inhale, rise. Fingertips touch your hands to shins. Exhale, fold, and then press down as you rise up, reaching tall. Exhale, the hands through. So just one more the same way, inhaling and rising up, halfway. Exhale, fold all the way down. Inhale to lengthen the spine, legs are long, gaze down. Exhale to fold and press down to rise, reach tall. Exhale the hands to center. So just continue to add on, inhale and rise, reach the arms up overhead. Exhaling, folding forward, halfway lift to lengthen. Exhale to fold. This time plant your hands. Left foot's going to go back into a low lunge. So left knee drops down. The back toes can stay under. Right knee is right over your ankle. Not out past your toes. So just pause here in your Anjanasana low lunge. When you're ready, draw strength from your center and take the arms up to cactus. Inhaling and exhaling. Again, the back toes can go flat if that feels balanced. You can always add any padding under the knees. As we move through, inhaling and exhaling, draw open. Maybe start to tip back a little bit further and draw open through the chest. Inhaling and exhaling. When you're ready, just release the hands down. Lift up and off of your left knee. This time, right leg goes back. And we're going to find our high plank, or it can be a kneeling plank as well. So I'll move through kneeling plank this first round. Exhale, slowly start to lower, elbows draw in all the way down to the mat, tops of the feet press, just a small cobra here, inhale and rise, lifting up only as far as it works for you, and then exhaling back, knees, toes turn, downward facing dog. So that's a modified lower part of your salutation, you can always do the full if that works for you, or some combination as we move along through our salutations. Inhale and rise on your toes, bend your knees, walk your way up to the top of the mat. Inhaling, we lift halfway, exhaling to fold. Press down and rise, reach tall. Exhale the hands through, so other side. Inhale, sweeping tall, and then exhaling and folding the all the way down. Halfway lift to lengthen. Exhale to fold. This time, hands plant. Right foot goes back into your low lunge. 
Back knee can come down, toes can go flat or stay under. Inhale, rise, just come to cactus arms. Drop, try to tip open a little further. Lunging a little bit further, maybe into that side as you draw the heart center open, let the arms come out. And again, gaze can go up as well if that is okay with your neck. Inhaling and exhaling, stabilizing through your center, so not overarching in your low back. Exhale, this time release the hands down, lift off your right knee, left leg goes back, high plank or kneeling. This time we're going to come through full chaturanga dasana if that works for you. Slight tip forward as you lower, you're lowering in one plane, elbows draw in, just a little bit of a hover over the mat, and then tops of the feet press as you inhale to upward facing dog, thighs lift. Exhaling back down or facing dog. If that was too much, feel free to stay with the previous option. Knees and cobra. Inhale, rise on your toes, bend your knees, look to where you're landing. Big steps to the top of the mat, land lightly. Inhale, halfway. And then exhale and fold. Press down and rise, reach tall. Exhale, hands through center. Inhale, sweeping tall, just three regular sun A's this time. Exhale, and fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to fold, hands plant, stepping back, kneeling plank or high plank, your choice. Exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Soft elbows, exhale back down for facing dog. So just starting to link the breath and movement even a little bit more fluidly. Rise high, bend the knees. Exhale to the top of the mat. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale to fold. Press down, use the lower body to help get you there as you rise all the way up. Exhale, bring it back to center. Inhale, sweeping up. Exhale, hip hinge forward, lead with the heart. Remember, opening up through the top of the body. Halfway lift to lengthen. Exhale to fold, plant your hands, move slowly. There's no rush. Slowly lower with strength. Inhale, rise, drop up and open. Exhale all the way back, downward facing. Inhale, rise high, bend your knees. Use all that lower body strength to get you up to the top of the mat. Halfway lift. Exhale to fold, and then press down and rise. Reach up, maybe adding a tiny little back bend there. Bring it back to center. So just one more center on the scarf. Inhale, sweeping up, adding on, moving on. Exhale, fold all the way down. Halfway lift to lengthen. Exhale to fold, plant your hands and step back. And again, modify or fold, lowering down slowly. Your choice, your practice. Inhale to cobra or up dog. Exhale back, downward facing dog. This time we're going to stay in our downward facing dog for five rounds of breath. And that can always be a child's pose as well. Even if I don't mention it, it is always there as an option. So take your time to rest, inhaling and exhaling. Just anything that you need. Take a moment. Whenever you need a drink of water, feel free to grab it. One more round of breath. When you're ready, I'm going to let float the right leg up and back behind you into your three-legged dog. So this first three-legged dog can be a little bit further up and open as you wish. Maybe bend the right knee. Peek underneath that right arm. Inhaling and exhaling. Reaching the right leg long, maybe roll out the ankle. And then as you're ready, start to close the right hip and start to shift forward, bringing the right knee into you. So pause for a moment and then step the right foot down and come on up to your high crescent lunge this time. So same as where we were before. Exhale the arms to cactus once more, but this time just a stronger, higher position in our lunge. Making sure you're bending the right knee towards the small toes, not letting it float in. Strong back leg. Inhaling and exhaling. Taking your time. One more round of breath. And then when you're ready, draw the hands to heart center and just fold forward. Place them down. Right leg goes back. Again, slowly lower down. Your choice. Inhale to cobra or upward facing dog. Exhaling back, downward facing dog. 
As you're ready, your left leg floating up and back behind you to do your three-legged dog. It might not be a really big version of it right away. Take your time to get there. Inhaling, exhaling. And you roll out the ankle, maybe bend the knee. Lots of little options there. And then when you're ready, you start to square up that left hip. Draw forward, left knee draws into the belly, and then slowly place that left foot down. Right leg strong as you come on up to your high crescent lunge, but draw the arms to cactus. So really opening up through the chest. Strong through your center, so you're stabilizing and not getting into your low back. Inhaling and exhaling. Bending more from the upper part of your spine. Inhaling and exhaling. One more round of breath. Maybe lunge a little deeper. Maybe check in with that back leg if it's starting to feel a little weak. Engage and exhale. Come fully down to your mat. Hands place. Left leg goes back. Slowly start to lower. Inhale and rise. Exhale to go back. Three rounds of breath in your downward facing dog. So take it, you take what you need. Child's pose is there when you need it as well. And when you're ready, we're going to take your right leg up and back. So similar idea here, but just adding on. Big step through with the right foot. Left foot's going to turn down. Come to your warrior one. So set it up from the ground up. Push into the legs. Use the strength and start to rise up. Again, warrior one, though, this time with our cactus arms. So hips are turning to the top of the mat. Knee is lunging towards the small toes. Left toes are going to turn in a little bit. So you're pressing into the outer edge of your back left foot. Again, strong through your center, maybe tipping the heart up and open a little bit further. A little back bend at the top. Inhaling and exhaling. As you're ready, you're going to take the arms behind you to clasp. Take another inhale and draw up and open. And then as you're ready, exhale and fold in half to humble warrior or devotional warrior. So it might be just half. If you've done this one before and you're familiar, maybe go a little further on the inside of the leg. Maybe the crown of the head starts to come towards the mat. So wherever you want to be, see what works for you. Don't overdo. Listen to your body. Inhaling and exhaling. Taking your time. Taking your hands to the sacrum, so not letting them kind of float up and back too much. When you're ready, you're lifting your gaze if you've come further down. Keeping the arms behind you if you can. Follow your left foot. So options here in two or warrior three. Arms can stay back with the hands clasped or just maybe airplane. Let's see if that works better. As you're ready, you're coming up into your warrior three. Left toes and left hip are facing down as you fold in half as if, if there is a table in front of you. Gaze is down. Find your balance. When you're ready to come out, your right knee is going to bend. Slowly let the left foot land and release the arms just coming up. Exhaling your hands through, placing them down. The right leg goes back. You can go right to the downward facing dog or move through that lower part of your salutation again. Your choice, your practice. Take a few rounds of breath where we all meet up in our downward facing dog. And then as you're ready, your left leg is going to extend behind you. Big step through, land lightly, left foot, right foot turns. Deep lunge in your left knee. Hips are turning to the top of the mat, so take a minute to set it up. And then when you're ready, reaching the arms up, but taking them more to cactus and drawing up and open into the front body. And engage the abdominals so we're not overarching in the lower spine. Inhaling and exhaling. Taking your time. One more round of breath, gazing, wherever works for your neck. When you're ready, your arms are going to come behind you, clasp the hands, palms together as you inhale one more time to lengthen, and then exhale, humble warrior, bowing forward. Maybe the chest comes to the top of the thigh, but be cautious to not sort of let it just sort of uh, collapse on the top of the thigh. 
Maybe you just kind of set it on the inside. And if you can go a little further on the inside, and it feels good for you, feel free to do so. Keep breathing. Inhale and exhale. Take your time. As you're ready to rise, lift your gaze first. Not coming up too quickly. Start to rise onto the left leg, ball of your right foot, so prepare. Not coming up too quickly. Hands can stay clasped behind you if that works. If not, maybe just airplane arms to draw the heart center open as you're coming up into your rear vajrasana three or warrior three. Left leg is your stability, so your left knee needs to be soft. And you're pressing with that right foot behind you as you fall right onto this imaginary table in front of you. Inhaling and exhaling when you're ready. Ooh, my balance isn't great tonight. Left knee <laughs> bends and the right foot comes down. Or one side sometimes might be different than the other. Inhale, rise, reach up. Exhale, hands through. Place them down. Left leg back. Slowly lower. Inhale to rise. And exhale back. Take a few rounds of breath in here now, facing dog. Yoga can be different every time you come to it, even if you practice every day, and your poses will look and feel different every time you come into them. As you're ready, slowly start to come forward into a high plank or kneeling plank. So five rounds of breath. If taking the feet together is helpful, feel free. Draw the shoulders back, draw the belly in, gazes down. Inhaling and exhaling, you're one long line of energy. From the crown all the way up. The feet, inhale and exhale. Nice and strong. And you're ready, slowly release back, downward facing dog. As you're ready, set the knees down and just come into a full child's pose. And let the head rest, let the arms come alongside the legs. Inhaling and exhaling. And then start to walk the hands up to where the knees are. Start to lift the gaze and start to rise up. This time just sitting right back on your heels, so a little differently than where we began. Walk your hands behind you into what's often called a reverse cow. So maybe your hands go flat, maybe they don't, not a big deal. You can stay right here, just gazing over the chest, or if your head wants to go back and the neck allows it, feel free. Keep the knees from lifting up off of the mat, and then start to press into the hands and lift the seat up off of your heels. It might come off just a tiny bit, or maybe a little bit further, but open up through the front body. Inhaling and exhaling, just take the head where the neck allows, it doesn't have to go all the way back. And then slowly release down. When you're ready, just make your way back to your downward facing dog. And extend your right leg behind you, up into your three-legged dog. So we're going to just stay for a few more rounds of breath. Take your time to open it up a little further as you'd like. And then an option here, when you're ready, the left ball of the foot is going to stay as the right leg comes over where you're coming across an arm, outstretched heart pose. So the right ball of the foot's going to land. Your left leg stays strong. You're on the outside edge of your left foot now. It's almost like a side plank, but with the leg behind you. Right arm's going to reach up and open to peel open. Inhaling and exhaling. If this is too much, no worries. Just stay in your three-legged dog. As you're ready to come over, right hand lands back to your ball of your left foot and your right leg extends. Exhaling back to your dog when you're ready. Just walking it out. So none of these are must-dos. Always options to go a little further if you wish or just stay where you are. And then left leg's going to come up and back. Stay in your three-legged dog for a few rounds of breath. Maybe start to play with opening it up a little further. And if you're feeling pretty steady there, 
you're going to turn on the ball with the right foot. Left ball foot's going to come behind you. Right arm, you're stabilizing through as your right leg extends and your left arm is going to reach up and open. You're on the outside edge of your right foot. So right leg is long, left leg behind you like a little kickstand. Inhaling and exhaling. Slowly releasing as you're ready. Left hand lands, ball of your right foot, left leg can reach up and back one last time. Downward facing dog. Rise high on your toes, bend your knees. Walk, step your way up to the top of the mat. Take an inhale, left half leg. Exhale to fold. And then press down and rise, reach up. Exhale the hands through and just come to your mountain pose, your Tadasana. And take a few rounds of breath, check in, inhaling and exhaling. Find your foundation once again. And moving into our last standing series, when you're ready, start to open the eyes if you have closed them. Left leg's going to step back. So you're coming into your pyramid stance. Your hips or toes face the short edge of your mat. You can start with just hands at your hips to uh, sort of get yourself set. Your feet are not on a tight rope, so you can take them a little bit wider if that works for you. And then when you're ready, maybe the arms come behind you to clasp, hands to clasp, or hands to either elbow or reverse on the stay. Whatever suits you. Take an inhale to lengthen and open. And then as you're ready, exhale, start to bow forward. Coming down over the right leg. You can keep the arms behind you for as long as you like. When you're ready to release them, do so slowly. And then you can adjust the footing as you need to. Maybe walk the hands back toward the fingers facing the back edge of your mat, bowing over the right leg. Inhaling, exhaling. If you have a block nearby that you would like to use, we are moving into our Chandrasana or Half Moon Pose next, so you're welcome to grab it. If you don't need it, no worries at all. Inhaling and exhaling. When you're ready, start to walk the hands back up towards the right foot and start to lift the gaze. So step the left foot in a touch, maybe you should come in a couple times before you start to lift off. So your right hand is going to come a foot or two out from your pinky toe, maybe to your block, or maybe just to spire fingers. Soft right knee as you start to shift the weight into the right leg, your left leg starts to rise and open, press through the ball of your left foot as your left arm floats up as well. Take your time to get settled. Again, your gaze can be a number of places, down, out to the side, or up and open. Find your strength and your balance, your drishti, your focus. Inhaling and exhaling. So you are welcome to stay right here. If you would like to work towards uh, Chakasana or the backbending variation on your half moon, you may. If you're not sure what I mean and you just want to stay where you are, that's great too. If you would like that left knee bent and you're going to reach to the top of that foot, you might need to close up a little bit to catch hold of it. Then once you get it, start to peel back open, pressing the foot into the hand to start to open up a little bit of a back bend, nice quad stretch. Watch that that right knee has it hyperextended, so still strong through your right leg. Inhaling and exhaling. When you're ready to release, try not to slingshot it, slowly release and open. And then exhale, left hand comes down, left leg comes down. Toe heel your feet apart. Take the toes wider and then exhale and sit all the way down to Malasana or a low squat. If your heels are down, let the toes be light. If they're not, you can always be a little bit more on the ball of the feet or maybe just out of blanket and block or something behind you to have a little seat on. Just letting this be a restful pose but also a nice hip opener in between sides. You can take the hands to heart center, or maybe just bow the head, let the arms release. Settling in to the hips a little bit. Maybe rolling out your wrists, or taking them in the opposite direction. Whatever suits you. Inhaling, exhaling. When you're ready, I'm just gonna start to move to the other side. 
If you can, without the use of the arms, press down and rise right from the legs, toe heel to feet together. Take an inhale to lift and reach high. Exhale and fold forward. So just a little half salute here. Halfway lift to lengthen. Exhale to fold. And then press down and rise, reach top. Exhale the hands through. And then right foot steps back, finding that pyramid stance on the other side. So you can take the feet as wide out uh, around the corners of the mat as you like. So again, they're not on a tight rope. They can be a little bit wider. Hips and toes face the top edge of your mat. Starting out, maybe just hands to hips to get settled. And then if you'd like, maybe hands can clasp or hands to either elbow. Reverse namaste is another option if that works for you. Take an inhale and lift and lengthen. So you're lifting up and out of the waist, not just bending into the low back. And then when you're ready, exhale and pinch forward. Maybe pause along the way. Whenever you're ready to come forward all the way over that left leg, feel free to release the arms and maybe walk the hands back down the mat, facing the fingers in the other direction. And bow over your left leg. One more round of breath. As you're ready to start to walk the hands up so you know where we're headed if you want to add or block, feel free. If not, you're starting to step the right foot in and shift the weight into your left leg coming into your half moon on the other side. So your left hand is light, whether it's at the floor or your mat and block to help stabilize you. Left knee is soft as the right leg starts to lift, press through the right foot. Keep that top leg nice and strong. Right arm floats up as well. Finding your half moon or Ardhanasana. Inhaling and exhaling. Gaze can go where the neck allows. Again, never moving your gaze quickly in balancing poses. Inhaling and exhaling. And then if you want to take that back to the duration, you're welcome to. If not, no worries. Just stay where you are. Again, one side might be a lot different than the other. Bending your right knee, maybe reaching to the top of that right foot. As you start to peel open, maybe it works differently on this side. Inhaling and exhaling, we're typically not balanced in our bodies. Maybe you can roll open a little further. Whenever you're ready, try to release slowly with control. Let the right hand come down, let the right leg come down to match the left, and then just toe heel it apart and take a wider variation of your standing forward fold. Knees can go soft, maybe you shift a little side to side. Gorilla pose, hands to either elbow. So whatever variation on your standing forward fold works for you. Our last one here. Taking your time. When you're ready to release the arms, if you clasp them, go ahead. And bend into the knees and just sit right back down onto your mat. Let the legs go long in front of you. Inhaling and reach the arms up overhead. Just take a nice long staff pose here. Inhaling and then as you're ready to exhale, start to hip hinge forward, reaching out past your feet. Go as long forward as you can before rounding into the spine. You're ready, slowly coming on up. Take the hands to heart center. If you want your block near you as we come down to the mat, feel free. We're gonna slowly roll our way down as slowly as you can, so no hurry. If you need to scoot forward, feel free. If you wanna release the hands, again, feel free to have your block handy. You can maybe let one elbow come down at a time. And just slowly find your way all the way down to the mat. And once you arrive, you can take the knees in and give a little squeeze, rock side to side. And let the knees fall all the way over to the right side in a revolved supine twist. 
So lifting the right shoulder up, replant the left shoulder blade down. Just letting this twist be a natural, comfortable twist for you. So there's lots of variations here. Maybe the top leg goes out to straighten, right hand can drag it along a little further. Both knees stay bent, that's good too. Inhaling and exhaling. Soften the face, relax your jaw. When you're ready to come back through center, do so slowly, take a minute to get yourself situated back to center. In your next exhale, let the knees go to the left and your supine twist, left shoulder lifts as the right shoulder comes back down towards the mat. Both knees can stay bent, maybe that left hand can draw the top leg across or maybe the right leg wants to straighten, reach a little longer, stretch to the IT band. Right arm out to the right side. If you want to gaze towards the right hand, that's always an option. Or maybe just keep the neck in line, gazing overhead or close the eyes. Inhaling and exhaling, keeping your breath fluid. When you're ready, maybe bending the right knee if you've straightened that leg and start to come back through center. And when you're ready, we're gonna to come to our reclining uh, Govakasana leg. So right leg is gonna come on top of your left. So just like you're in cow face pose seated, but instead we're gonna take it reclining. Right knee stacks onto the left knee. You're gonna reach up to hold on to the outside edges of the feet. So resist the urge to kind of pull your knees in. You actually wanna to try to compress them away and press the feet into the hands a little bit, keeping your tailbone down to the mat and try to relax your shoulders and don't let your jaw do the work. So keeping knee over knee, just taking the tailbone down to the mat. You may only go so far with this, and again, one side might be different than the other. So take a few rounds of breath, move slowly. Holding on maybe to the heels is more accessible, feel free. When you're ready, slowly undo. Maybe just release the knees, let the legs go long, overhead, roll out the ankles if you wish, and then left over right, reaching up to the sides of the feet. And let your tailbone stay connected to the mat so it's not like we're trying to draw the knees into the body. So think of it just like we were in this pose seated. Inhaling and exhaling. Holding on where it works, the heels or your feet. Just one more round of breath. As you're ready, slowly uncrossing the legs and let the feet come down to the mat and the windshield wiper the knees just side to side as you'd like. And we're going to come into one bridge pose and then add a block if you have one beneath us to take the legs overhead with the hips on the block. So if that's uh, without a block, that's okay too. So wherever you have there at home. Walk the feet nice and close into you, feet and knees stay hip distance, arms alongside. When you're ready, you're pressing into the feet to lift the hips up to knee height. Keep the knees from splaying open and maybe walk the shoulders underneath the body. Arms can stay long or you can clasp the hands. Maybe press into the feet and lift a little higher and engage your glutes to stabilize your hips. Belly just rises and falls with your breath, strong legs. Inhaling and exhaling. And stay another couple rounds of breath. As you're ready to come out, you're undoing the shoulders if you've tucked them, releasing the hands. Slowly rolling your way down. 
And again, you can watch the way for the knees, a little side to side, taking your time. We're going to come up once more, this time with the eight of the block, if you have one. If not, just heading it back up into the same position. So when you're ready, you're rising up, pressing into the feet. If you're adding your block, it's right underneath your sacrum, either flat, midway up, or all the way up. If you're familiar, no need to go higher than you're comfortable with. We're just elevating the hips up a little bit higher. You can take the shoulders underneath you, but just keep the arms long this time. Inhaling and exhaling. Letting the block help you a little bit as you stay in your bridge a little bit longer. And again, you can adjust it as, need, as needed, maybe a little bit higher, maybe a little lower. Seeing how it can support you. Maybe you can release in areas where you felt tight or tense. We often hold tension in the face or the jaw when we don't even realize it. And you are welcome to remain on your block to take the legs overhead, or if you're not feeling stable there or don't want to worry about the block, no worries at all. You can take it out or just take the legs up overhead one at a time. Both legs reaching long. And make sure you're stable on your block so it shouldn't feel like it's on your spine just across your tailbone. Take the legs overhead. You can roll out the ankles and move the toes. Just let the legs and feet have a little break overhead. Maybe close the eyes. Maybe your breath gets a little slower, even still. Your inhales are still matching your exhales in length. Still keeping the mind clear of any thoughts or busyness. Maybe call to mind that intention or dedication that you set at the beginning of your practice. Or maybe just coming back to that idea of gratitude. Being present. Grateful for what we have and where we are. Whenever you're ready to come down, you're doing so slowly, one leg coming down at a time. Gently pressing into the feet to lift up and off of your block. Just sliding it out, setting yourself down. Soles of the feet come together, knees just fall open and you're reclining bound angle or supta baddha konasana. And then keeping with our theme of our cactus arms, drawing them up and open, opening up through the chest, you can take them out just to the side, arms out to the sides, or maybe just one long stretch through the side body up and overhead. Inhaling and exhaling, just sighing it all out. Arms can bend at your sides. And just fall open. I invite you to stay here for the remainder of our practice. If you want to add anything, or if you feel the need for any other movement or shape or stretch of any kind and just want to take it, feel free. So finding your way into your Shavasana, which might mean corpse pose, or maybe you want to just stay exactly where you are. Again, your choice, your practice. Wherever you choose to be, let yourself be neutral and symmetrical. Arms and legs releasing open in whatever fashion you wish. Close the eyes, soften the face, let the lips part. Let your breath be easy, inhaling and exhaling. Letting go of all the work that you've done. Let all of the good that you've done acclimate to the body. Allow yourself these final moments of rest, stillness. Allow yourself to just be.
slowly start to awaken the body, coming back from wherever you may have drifted. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos to order, confusion to clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. As you're ready to slowly come back up, pulling off to a side, and gently pressing yourself up to a comfortable seat, inviting your hands back to heart center from where we began. And gratitude to yourself for taking the time to practice. As we bow forward, the light in me truly honors the light in each one of you. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining us tonight.